Welcome back to the shop. So, something I've been having fun with over the last few weeks is playing with multiple lead threads on my mini lathe. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you've seen that I love cutting threads on the lathe. It's a, it's a good challenge. It's kind of the, the ultimate use of the metal cutting lathe, is making uh, basically any size or type of thread that you could ever want. Uh, after seeing a video from our favorite machine instructor, uh, Mr. Pete 222, uh, aka Tubal Kane, uh, I've always been intrigued by the multiple lead thread, and the he explains it very, very eloquently uh, as he does everything. Uh, so I wanted to, you know, I've been wanting to try it on my machine. Now, what is a multiple start thread or multiple lead thread? Well. All well, typical threads, any, any thread you're going to find um, most commonly, is going to be what's known as a single lead thread. And that's when the pitch and the lead are the exact same. There's one lead, it is, say this is a 3 8 by 16, that means it's wrapping around uh, this, this rod, uh, this cut has been made in this rod, um, it, 16 revolutions in one inch. And that means that the angle of this thread is um, I'd have to look it up here in the look it up here in the Bible, but that's so that angle is is relation to that to to that turn that the uh, 16 times in one inch uh, twist, and that's again that's just the one cut being made all the way around. In a multiple lead thread, each actual thread uh, has its own lead that is or has its own pitch that is not the same as the overall thread size. So if this, let's say for example, this 3 8 by 16, if this were a double start thread instead of the single start, instead of one cut uh, going at 16 threads per inch, it would be two at eight threads per inch. And the angle of the actual coil of the thread would be at a, a greater incline, uh, if that makes sense. So it would, you would, basically, it traverses at twice the rate. If you were to, to screw it in, uh, the same amount of turning would advance whatever threaded item twice as fast. Or in the case of a triple lead thread, three times as fast. And that's what this guy is. This is a triple lead thread. I cut in just a, a, a junky piece of aluminum. And this one's ugly. We're going to cut fresh ones today and work on modeling them in, in CAD as well. But it's a triple lead thread. It's three eight-pitch threads stacked on top of each other. Now, when you do that, it now has to be the size of whatever, you know, th uh, the uh, number of leads times the pitch is. So three eight-pitch threads means that's a the size of a 24 threads per inch pitch. So, to, so the reasons for doing that are, are many. You know, if you want a faster traverse, but you don't have the room for a coarser thread, then you can obviously stack smaller threads on top, and in a uh, more confined area, you can have a faster turning thread. So there are a number of ways to do this. I'm going to be using the same method that uh, Mr. Pete taught in his video of the parallel compound rest. So let's go walk over to the lathe and I'll, I'll show it to you. Okay, so over here on the mini lathe, you can see I've got the workpiece set up. And this, like I said, is just that one, uh, one inch piece of bar. And all I've done is kind of touched off on the outside to uh, clean it up a little bit. And then I cut a groove in here about 50 thousandths deep. And that'll just give us a good stop cut. This is just a random cut off of bar. And I thought it'd be nice just to demonstrate this on. I don't have to do a lot of turning to get it to a size. And uh, if I screw up, I can just slice this off and, and use the rest of the bar for whatever or just keep trying. Um, the way I have the lathe set up, as you can see, is different from a typical threading operation. The compound, in this case, is actually set parallel to the beds of the waves. It's uh, zero on, on this dial, uh, zero degrees. Because what we're going to do is for every pass we take, we're going to feed in on the cross feed. I've got this zeroed out. I've already touched off on the work, and I'll actually lay out some dicom so you can see a little bit better. But this requires a little bit more thinking because every pass we take, we're going to need to back out and then instead of resetting our cross feed to zero, as, a, as with a typical threading operation, we'll actually be advancing the cross feed with every cut. Now with typical threading operations, if you haven't done one in the lathe, you typically have your compound set to half the, 
the angle of your thread and you advance it along that angle. And you advance this every time you take a deeper cut. And this is just a way to back the tool out, scoot over, back it in, and then re-zero. So if you're still with me, after we take one full thread cut to full depth, we will then advance the cross, uh, the, the compound rest. We'll advance the compound rest, and what's going to happen is that we are going to advance this wheel the depth of one uh, 24 threads per inch thread. Remember, we're going for that size of a thread. So we're cutting it to a certain depth, and then we're also advancing it for the next lead. And we'll do that a total of three times. We'll take a, t a total of three cuts for this three lead, uh, eight pitch, and uh, 24 thread size thread. Now taking a, a cut of this nature, uh, an eight thread per inch uh, pitch is going to push this whole tool across the lead screw pretty quickly. It's gonna, it, so it's, you need to pay attention to kind of a number of things at once because we're gonna look for our number on the threading dial. And uh, one of the things I do mostly just because it's a, a bit of a belt and suspenders sort of thing is I always hit just the exact same number on the thread dial. Uh, I know for certain, you know, for, it depends on your lead screw and everything. You can hit certain threads at all the evens or all of the evens and odds or all the evens, odds, and hash marks, whichever. Um, just for my own sanity, I just hit it at the exact same number on the thread dial every single time. Um, that's just the way I do it. Probably unnecessary. What we're going to do right now is we're going to take a scratch pass about 160 RPMs. Looks like we're a little eccentric there, that's okay. Back out the cross slide. Back in the cross slide, remembering where we were just at. Advancing, let's go three. No, didn't like that. Okay, this is 25 right here. And what I'll do is take a couple of spring passes. That's passes at the same depth, but they allow us to make sure that this last couple of cuts are accurate and uh, to allow for any of the possible pushback or flex in anywhere in the tool or the mount or anything. So that was the second pass. You saw we got a little meat there. We'll go for a number three. As with cutting all threads, the very few final passes are always the heaviest ones because you're taking a form cut, you're cutting the shape of this V, so even though you're only advancing maybe one or two thousandths in, uh, you're, <laughs> you're actually taking off more meat with a, a, every pass of the cutter. So it's kind of, it's easy to start fast and then slow down, or that's, that's one way of doing it, I suppose. And that's just a barely scrape, so, okay. Now we're resetting our cross, cross slide to zero. What I'm gonna do with my compound rest is advance it, and that is going to be 42 thousandths of an inch. Which, if you divide one by 24, you get point, uh, zero, four, one, six, 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 forever. So we're going to advance the tool now. This we're going to advance the tool now this way. Uh, that distance, 42 thousandths of an inch. Now we should start landing here just on the uh, on one side of this blued area. And we're, we're going to fit two more threads in this blued area. So let's just see how it goes. Might have been too deep already. I'm not sure.
Okay, and then we will advance another 42 thousandths. And we are back at zero on the tool. I'm just going to go ahead and advance it. And now we're cutting in what's left of the blue. Pretty cool. If I don't F it up. Always an option. That was just a scrape cut. Should we do one more just for for funsies? Probably a good idea. Okay. That's a little ugly, so let's get a brush and clean it up real quick. Now one true way to test it, or one good way to test it, is with Thread gauge, 24 TPI thread gauge, and that actually sits in there. <laughs> oh, well, so far that's the uh, best one yet that I've cut. Zang. Goodness gracious. Now cutting a nut to mate to this thread is uh, basically the exact same operation as cutting the bolt, cutting the male version. Uh, I, I didn't get good video of cutting the very first thread, uh, it was all out of focus and, and crappy. So, But basically I've just got an internal thread cutting tool and the machine isn't set up any differently. I don't have to switch the angle of the compound rest like you, you do cutting uh, traditional threads. So basically, I'm just doing exactly what we just did, just on the inside here. I've drilled and then bored this piece of aluminum out, uh, starting at, uh, I believe I started with an internal diameter of 0.965. Uh, worked out the, the math and all that stuff, just to give myself some clearance. And then we just cut all three threads. and give it a little brushy brushy to clean it up. Now I wanted to see if I could do this in CAD. I've been playing a lot with Fusion 360. It's a great program and it's free for us hobbyists. It doesn't officially have a way to create a triple start thread. I looked on some forums and found that they sort of had a workaround. So this is what I came up with and it's the best so far. And I'm just starting by making our cylinder here. We, we obviously need to, to have a cylinder to cut threads into and it doesn't really matter. This is just a one inch diameter by one inch length, I believe. Just a cylinder. But what we're going to do next is create a coil. And we're selecting the, the bottom plane there. Not the face of the cylinder, but the plane. Because otherwise the thread will cut off and the, the coil will spin off in a weird direction. I haven't quite figured that out yet. But we make it the same diameter as our cylinder. And it's set so that it, it cuts a triangle internally. So that's basically doing exactly what we did on the lathe. Now the height and diameter, uh, the diameter is one inch, we already set that. Height doesn't really matter. The pitch we want to be one eighth, so that's 0.125. That's our one in eight uh, pitch right there. Now it's not showing up yet because we need to make our section size uh, the right size. And that's going to be basically the depth of the cut we took over there on the lathe. And I'm, I think I said it here, to, yeah, 27 thousandths. Um, and so we have our single coil there, much like the first pass we took on the lathe. Now, to make it a triple lead thread, what we're going to do is go down to the pattern 
tool and do a circular pattern. And we're just going to make two more of these. We're going to select both faces of that cut we just took. And then we're going to select the z-axis, that's the vertical axis, or whatever the central axis of our part here is. And it's already set to the quantity being 3. So obviously if you're trying to model a 4-lead thread, you would do 4, etc., etc., etc. Now, <laughs> once, I, once I do that and press the OK button, it actually takes my computer uh, a few seconds to, to crunch this, and, which I find pretty interesting. But in doing this, this is, it's not 100%, but it's about as close as I've found you can get doing a, a multiple lead thread or even just a thread of an odd size because uh, there's a threading tool in, in Fusion, but it, if you were doing something more custom. Now, doing it this way, you can see there's some blocky areas at the very bottom of the threads, and that's because we started on that plane. Uh, what I've done in, in the past with other models is to start it uh, on a lower plane than your cylinder because those those cuts are basically kind of it's kind of interrupted there. So it's not 100% perfect in this model, but this is just kind of a quick and uh, neat way to do it if you like playing with CAD, which I wholeheartedly recommend. Okay, cleaned up our nut. A little Scotch bridle sandpaper there on the outside. And of course, there's our bolt. Now for the exciting payoff. Little gunky in there. Fix a tin man.